Babes with a special first on CNBC Guest. Thanks, uh, Mark. That's right. It's been a hard week for shares of Bear Stearns as the firm has been buffeted by constant rumors of a looming liquidity problem. Bear maintains that its balance sheet, capital positions, all strong. The stock, which rallied yesterday, still down 17% over the last five trading sessions. Joining me now first on CNBC is Alan Schwartz. He is Bear Stearns' president and CEO. Mr. Schwartz, thanks so much uh, for, for being here this morning. Um, good morning, David. Good morning. Let me start off with this broad idea that's been in the market now for a few days and pressuring your stock, namely that counterparty risk is something, new counterparty risk is something that a number of firms on Wall Street no longer want to take in terms of uh, dealing with Bear Stearns. Is that true? Uh, no, it's, uh, it's not true. Um, we are, uh, there's been a lot of volatility in the market, um, a lot of disruption in the market, and that's causing some pressure administratively on getting some trades settled out, but we're working hard getting that done. Uh, we're in a constant dialogue with uh, all of the major dealers and the counterparties in the street, and uh, we are not being made aware of anybody who is uh, not taking our credit as a counterparty. All right, so when I'm told by a hedge fund that I know well that last night they tried to close out a mortgage, uh, a credit protection uh, mortgage position uh, with Goldman Sachs that they had bought a year ago, Bear was the low bid, and I'm told that Goldman would not accept the counterparty risk of Bear Stearns. You're saying you're not aware that that would be the case? I'm not aware, and I, you know, on a specific trade from one counterparty to another, and and where you're a third party, uh, we have direct dealings with all of these institutions, and we have uh, active markets going with each one, and uh, our our counterparty risk has not been a problem. Uh, why is all this out there to begin with? I mean, where you know, what do you think is causing uh, these rumors? The stock yesterday recovered after being down as much as 11 percent, but as I said, it has been quite weak. Uh, the company has denied, and you're saying here there are there are no problems. So where does all this come from? Well, you know, it's very hard to say. Why, you know, why do rumors start? If I if I had to speculate, I would say that you know last week was a difficult time in the mortgage business. There was uh, talk about problems at GSEs. There was certainly some problems with some funds that were invested in very high quality instruments, but uh, on a lot of leverage, and there were some problems there. And, um, you know, uh, some people could, could speculate uh, that Bear Stearns might have some problems in there since we're a significant player in the mortgage business. Uh, none of those speculations are true, but it's a market that um, I'm sorry to jump is in concerned here. about right. things. I'm sorry, Alan. I'm sorry, yeah. David. I just want to jump in here. We'll go right back to you. Breaking yep. news, though, we do want you to know that we have New York State officials confirming that New York Governor Elliot Spitzer will resign today. Formal resignation, we don't have it, but it is now confirmed that the governor of New York will resign today. We'll give you more headlines as we get them. And, David, let's hand it back in to, to you now. All right. Thank you, Aaron, uh, for that. Perhaps not unexpected news. Uh, sorry to uh, cut you off, uh, Alan. Let's. Uh... Oh, that's okay, David. So I, I don't know where the rumors started. Maybe I could just say this. I think that yeah. you know part of the problem is that when speculation starts in a in a market that has a lot of emotion in it and people are concerned uh, about the volatility, then people will sell first and ask questions later, um, and that creates its own momentum. Um, you know, we put out a statement, I did, that uh, our liquidity and balance sheet are strong. Maybe I should expand on that a little bit. Well, yeah, why don't um, you? Know, you? I mean, when you say something like that, give me some examples. You know, you and I had an interview about two months ago when you had just taken the job. You were right. fairly positive in terms of uh, Bear having taken the marks that you thought were necessary, having treated its balance sheet conservatively in terms of level three assets. Right. So uh, had things changed? Uh, have they gotten worse over the last two months? Well, the markets have certainly gotten worse, uh, but our liquidity position is, has not changed at all. Um, our balance sheet has not weakened at all. Uh, so let me just talk about that for a second. What I did say to you a few months ago is we had spent last year moving away from any reliance on the unsecured markets into secured facilities, uh, using our collateral to borrow against, and we finished the year and we reported that we had a $17 billion of cash sitting at the parent company as a liquidity cushion. As the year has gone on since year end, that liquidity cushion has virtually been unchanged. So we still have many, many billions, uh, 17 billion or so of excess cash sitting on the balance sheet at the holding company as a liquidity cushion. That's an addition 
to billions of dollars of cash and unpledged collateral that are at our subsidiaries. So we don't see any pressure on our liquidity, let alone a liquidity crisis. All right, uh, we have a couple of minutes left. Let me get through a couple of things quickly. I know you can't talk specifically about earnings. They're going to be reported in, I think, about nine days. But the estimates are out there that you're going to earn money. Ninety-seven cents, I think, is sort of where the analysts are for your fiscal first quarter. Does that seem accurate? Is there anything you want to sort of tell us broadly here about whether your Bear Stearns is going to earn money for its uh, first quarter? Well, let me say, you know, uh, as we put together, we close the books. I don't want to comment too specifically on earnings. So let me just say that there is a range of estimates out there, all of them uh, that were profitable for the quarter. I think there's a range of estimates that I am aware of. Um, and I think uh, as we close the books, I'm comfortable uh, with the range of estimates that are out there for us currently. Um, it, was a, it was a difficult quarter. We talked about having marked our positions Appropriately, we also talked at, uh, at year end, David, about having uh, put on some hedges against those positions right. to protect against further spread widening. Uh, what happened in the quarter was clearly um, some of the markets got worse. Uh, some of our inventory did have to be marked down again to reflect changes in the marketplace. Uh, fortunately, uh, so, you know, our hedges have worked reasonably well in that regard. Um, and so while there's been difficulties and continued in some areas of fixed income, uh, there's also been strong activity uh, in our, uh, across the board in our global equities business uh, and in the rates business in some areas. So, you know, it's been a difficult environment, but I'm comfortable that we will be in the, the range okay. of the estimates that let are me, out there. Let me finish up simply, uh, simply by asking you, you know, yesterday the Fed's move, market reacted obviously very positively. Do you think it's enough? Uh, what's your sense in terms of are things going to worsen or are they going to start to get better in terms of the deleveraging and the credit crisis? I think there's still going to be a bunch of volatility. I think the Fed's moves, as opposed to any one of them, uh, making the situation that much better. I think it shows that they are really on top of the situation. They understand that it's not just the level of interest rates, but the technicals of the market that have been very difficult. And I think they're looking at a variety of ways to make sure that liquidity is available to all of us as dealers to be able to finance appropriately our customer activities. Uh, I think we'll continue to do that. Uh, and I think the situation with time will stabilize. Well, Alan Schwartz, thank you so much for, uh, for being here this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you, David. Alan Schwartz, President, CEO, Bear Stearns.